Hey guys, I hope this video finds everybody well today. Uh, been about a month since I've uh, shot my last update. Uh, figured it's time to get you guys up to speed. Uh, right now, still <laughs> same old, same old as far as the weather goes here in Georgia. Um, uh, been under, we've been under an extreme uh, to uh, severe drought uh, for the last several months, I mean, basically just all summer long, and uh, we're still that way. We're about to, they, they say we're about a foot behind on rain, and uh, it's just kind of strange, guys. Every, every state around us, and you know, North Carolina and South Carolina and Florida, everybody's just been just, just been getting hammered with rain. And most of the Midwestern states and all that flooding and carrying on, and <laughs> and uh, we just can't get anything. I mean, this is what our state looks like right here, as far as the. Uh, uh, current conditions on the drought and uh this is here's a shot of my zoysia grass <laughs> uh it looks like it's bad headed i don't know if it's gonna come back or not guys but anyway uh y'all just kind of send a little prayer for, for us down here in georgia and, and uh hope that we uh get some rain sometime soon here because it's uh the critters you can really tell that they're struggling and uh, they're just running around here try, trying to find something to drink, something to eat. I mean, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I gave up on trying to water anything a long time ago. So I guess with the hand surgery and everything, it was probably was a good, uh, probably a good move this year that I didn't have and wasn't able to have outside raised beds. <laughs> and I've got got the greenhouse here and I used it all summer long. And as you see, we have, we, we have replanted the fall and winter greenhouse. And uh, we're going to get right to that. I'm going to show you what's going on, show you how everything's doing, and show you what i got growing, and uh, show you a couple of experiments I'm going to try uh, this year and see what happens. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, guys. I uh, had a request from uh, Air Printing Hydroponics Channel, uh, Kirk Lee. Uh, he does a... You have to go in there and watch his channel. I'll, I'll post a link in the description box down there to his channel and uh, see, see what he does with these Dutch buckets. Uh, he does separate root pouches inside of Dutch buckets and uh, kind of cuts down on the root mass inside of it. And it's, it seems to be working pretty good for him, so y'all go over and check him out. But I had a request that he wanted me to do a measurement uh, <clears throat> between my clusters on my big beef tomatoes. So I'm just going to pick the very first one right here. And, uh, and I'm just going to stick the tape measure up in here, Kirk, and uh, I'm going to go from the, from the first cluster down at the bottom. To the second one which is about that one is about eight inches apart uh, the second cluster to the third cluster to the fourth cluster uh, is seven inches uh, the next cluster to the next cluster is about eight inches so they're they're, they're staying pretty consistent they're between seven and eight inches uh we'll go ahead and do one more here uh from that one i don't know if, i don't know if the camera's even getting this or not guys but i'm just measuring all the way up to as far as i can go uh that one's about six and a half inches to that cluster um that's that's working from bottom to top kurt so uh, if that helps you out uh, let me know if you need anything else Okay, guys, uh, I'm gonna freehand this thing this time, and just um, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you this time while I'm while I'm filming. Uh, sometimes uh, when I try to narrate these things after uh, do shooting the video footage, I forget to tell you something. Uh, hopefully, I won't forget anything this time. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> as you can see, these uh, these tomatoes have really grown since uh, since last video, since I last first planted them. Uh, There's a shot of them then, and. Uh, if you'll notice on that uh, very first plant right there, uh, I had a sucker there that uh, I put on the very first one. Well, I, I lower these things, you know, going that, going the direction towards the tables over there. Uh, the sucker has been moved to here. That, this first one right here is the Campari. Go ahead and get a shot of it while we're talking about it. Uh, got some nice tomato clusters already on there. 
uh, doing real good, looking real healthy, of course. Um, but the the big beef sucker got moved to this end. I had to swap them around because it just it wasn't quite as tall. Uh, although it looks like it's about to catch up. <laughs> Uh, but when I lower and lean, lean these things, I have to lower them towards the tables back there and I have to have the tallest plant, you know, going that direction. Nice clusters, guys. This thing here, I mean, I can't, I mean, as far as health-wise and everything like that, blooming real good. I can't really tell any difference in it and the, uh, and the ones, and the, these, uh, these other three right here were from seed. Now, like I said, I, I went back to my big beefs, the old faithful this year, and, uh, as you see, they're doing beautiful, and that's what I love about them. Uh, there are your tomatoes right there, all nice, beautiful clusters all the way up. And uh, just kind of give you an idea uh, for the size of these stems. You can see my thumb right there compared to the stem, and they're all like that all the way down. There's my thumb. And there's the stem. The stems are just doing beautiful, guys. All these are doing beautiful. Um, trying to get you in on all these tomato clusters. Really looking nice. Going to be, going to be early this year on tomatoes. I can already see it. Um, we don't normally get them till about December, ripe ones. But I think we're going to have some for Thanksgiving this year. And, uh, and this is the first one right here that I said where I swapped with the sucker. But. Uh, it ain't gonna be long. I bet they're all about the same height. They would, of course, this one has this one has been lowered more than the other ones. Um, as you see, the stems bent at the bottom right there. I've already been lowering these things already. See how they're curving in? They're not in line with the bucket. Uh, that's how fast these guys are growing. I tell you guys, I'm really, really, really impressed. Uh, like I say, I'm never disappointed uh, with the big beefs. I never am. So. Uh, Let's move on around to the peppers. Um, as you see, the peppers have made a comeback. Uh, if you'll notice right here in the first bucket, I lost my jalapeno. It, uh, it didn't make it. Uh, we're probably just going to put something else there in its place. Uh, maybe a, a broccoli plant or something other like that or uh, uh, some carrots. I don't know. We haven't decided what we're going to do yet. Um, but the yellow bell. These things kind of kind of stalled on me there for a little while, and then uh, I did something that uh, you're not really ought not to do. Just keep keep a keep a check on your nutrients. Uh, I kind of neglected to do that, and the nutrient uh, count, the PPM levels had gotten so high in the tanks right here that the plants kind of just stalled out, and then I realized that the nutrients were more than double what they were supposed to be, so I had to clean that tank out again. Uh, that's the green bell pepper. And you can see where we pruned it. Uh, some of this stuff didn't come back right here where the uh, stems are. We'll wind up cutting that off eventually. But uh, uh, the red bell pepper right here, which was, it, to start with, kind of one of the weakest ones, um, it's really uh, showing something now. It's just really doing good. It's already got, uh, it's already got buds and blooms coming on it already. Uh, the one that really surprised me, this, uh, that it was, was so vigorous, that's... Uh, it's coming back, but it's not doing all that great, but uh, was the cayenne. Uh, it was the cow horn cayenne pepper. But uh, anyway, they're, they're still growing and uh, we're gonna let them keep on growing. We'll do a little back shot here while I'm back here behind these tomatoes. <laughs> anyway, guys. Okay. Uh, this little seed tray down here. This these, these should already be in the uh, in the cracky beds, guys. These, these are uh, these are twelve of my tomatoes. Excuse me. These are my lettuce plants. Uh, the giant Caesar. Uh, I, I used an older pack of seeds uh, that uh, just they just did none of them germinate. So I had a I had a newer pack uh, that uh, they replanted and they had good success with it. So these are. These are getting about ready to go in the cracky beds, and we're going to do that real soon, probably in about another week. I'm going to start feeding them a week, a bit of nutrients. But uh, here's what we do. I have already planted. Uh, we've got the Vivian Romaine. Now, these will, these will have to be thin, guys, when they get a little bit bigger. Uh, this, the, you see there's more than one plant in there growing. Uh, and then this, we've got the Sylvia Red Romaine. They're all doing good. Uh, just have put these things in here about three days ago. 
uh, from seed from their seedling trays. And uh, we got one missing right there. I have, I have one that didn't come up, and I'm gonna, I've got one up to transplant into there. Uh, this is where the giant Caesar is going to go right here in this middle bed as soon as they're ready to go. And uh, something here I'm trying this year, guys. Uh, I mentioned something about the cucumbers, trying them in Cracky. Uh, well, I've got three little leaf cucumber plants right there in the back. As you see them right there. And uh, I've kind of just uh, constructed me a, a trellis net. I just swung it over the purling down there and then just strapped it down to the styrofoam plate. And uh, we'll see how these things do in Cracky. I've never grown them in Cracky before. I've grown them outside, of course, and in Dutch buckets. Um, done real good. Uh, we'll see how the Cracky method works on them. And then in the front right here, uh, I'm going back to try some of that dwarf blue kale that I grew a couple of years ago. I just put three of them in there, which uh, if they do like they did before, that'll be that'll be plenty of kale for us anyway. But uh, uh, that's about got it, guys. Okay, guys, that's about all I got for you this time around. Um, I'm going to try to start being more diligent about these videos, uh, try to get more videos posted. I'm going to try to start, uh, you know, getting getting back into some more how-to topics and things like that, you know, and all instead of just, you know, just constantly showing you, you know, what I'm, what's growing and all that. I mean, I need to get back into, you know, some more instructional type videos and the way I do things and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise, we'll get some... Uh, some some more in, info videos going here for you uh here in the future and uh, of course i'll keep you up to date with everything going on um I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go back to the to the 15 day updates like i was doing before with the the latest progress and stuff like that um you know so you guys just uh thank you so much for your support and uh, just please stay tuned and, and uh, y'all bear with us and we've had a lot going on this year as i've said before not making any excuses but you know it's just uh, it just has been uh kind of a weird 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 year for us so anyway until next time may god bless you we'll see you next time